The parable of the pipeline. How anyone can build a pipeline of ongoing residual income in the new economy. By Burke Hedges. Book summary. Overview. Becoming a millionaire is a matter of choice, not chance. In 1900, the average hourly pay in the United States was $22. At the period, the typical worker earned between $200 and $400 per year, significantly below the poverty level. Only 6% of the population of the United States had completed high school. The average life expectancy was 47 years. A bathtub was found in just 14% of the residences. There in the United States, there were 8,000 vehicles and just 144 miles of paved highways. Prior to World War I, the average food, housing, and clothes accounted for 80% of a family's income in the United States. 100 years ago, there were essentially two economic classes, the wealthy and the poor. And there's more. Only one out of every 10 households was whether you're from the top or middle classes, you're at the right place. This suggests that in 1900, 2001 the current median family income is $47,000. In this nation, there are more vehicles than people. Most at least two televisions are owned by every family. The majority of the country's 72 million households are still living paycheck to paycheck. Take it away. The typical family has no assets, including their house, automobiles, and furnishings. Zero. While family income is increasing, as is family debt and working hours. Spent on the job so, what's the matter? The problem is that far too many individuals have bought into the incorrect strategy. They're plugged into the incorrect system. They also lack a basic grasp of how money is made and amassed. Introduction. Many, many years ago, two determined young friends called Ramu and Somu were born. In a little community, they lived side by side. The young lads had a lot of huge dreams. They would chat incessantly about how they would become the wealthiest men in the world one day, in some manner. Village. They were brilliant and tough at the same time. Working. All they needed was a chance. That chance came around one day. Two men were hired by the community to transport water from a nearby river. To the town center Ramu and Samu were given the duty. Each guy took two buckets and made his way to the river. By the end of the day, we'll have accomplished our goal. For each pail of water, the village elder gave them a cent. Samu said, this is our dream come true. Ramu, on the other hand, was not so confident. From lugging the large buckets, his back hurt and his hands were scorched. He loathed getting out of bed. And then going to work the following day. He swore to come up with a better technique to collect the water from the well. The river leads to the settlement. The following morning, as they gathered their buckets and walked towards the river, Ramu stated, Samu, I have a plan. Instead of carrying buckets up and down the river, let's construct a pipeline from the river to the community for pennies a day. Samu was not in agreement with Ramu, and Samu yelled. Ramu, we've done a fantastic job. I'm capable of carrying 100 buckets every day. That's a bargain for a dime a pail. A buck a day I'm a millionaire. We're good to go for the rest of our lives. Get your pipeline out of here. Ramu, on the other hand, was not easily disheartened. To his closest buddy, he calmly outlined the pipeline idea. Ramu part of the day was spent hauling buckets, while the rest of the day and weekends were spent developing his pipeline. He was well aware that digging a ditch would be difficult. In a rocky environment he expected his income to diminish at first since he was paid by the bucket. Additionally, he understood it would be at least a year, if not two, before his pipeline began to pay off. Ramu, on the other hand, he went to work because he believed in his dream. Bruno and the other villagers started making fun of Ramu. Ramu the pipeline man, they called him. Somu, who was making almost twice as much as he was before, Ramu proudly displayed his new acquisitions. At the end, he purchased showy clothes and expensive meals. Mr. Somu was his name, and the locals cheered him on. Ramu continued to dig his pipeline. The Ramu didn't have anything to show for his efforts in the first several months. The labor was difficult, much more so than before. So Mu's because Ramu worked nights and weekends as well. Ramu, on the other hand, constantly telling himself that today's sacrifices provide the foundation for tomorrow's goals. Day after day he dug a little at a time, an inch at a time. As he staggered inside his tiny home, he told himself, short-term suffering equals long-term gain. Another day's labor has left me weary. He determined his success by establishing and achieving his goals. Daily objectives, knowing that the outcomes will greatly outweigh his efforts over time. Months changed into days. Ramu found his pipeline was halfway built one day, which meant he only had a few days to finish it. To fill his buckets, he had to travel half as far. 
Ramu put the additional time to good use by working on his pipeline. The deadline was approaching quicker and faster. Ramu kept an eye on his old pal Samu throughout his rest periods. Somu's shoulders were slumped more than usual. Ever. His steps were delayed by the daily grind, and he was bent in misery. Somu felt enraged and glum, resenting the situation. The idea that he would have to carry buckets every day for the rest of his life Ramu's big day had finally come, and the pipeline was complete. As the water level rose, the residents flocked to the area. Flowed into the hamlet from the pipeline cistern. People from the neighboring areas began to visit the community now that it had a consistent source of fresh water. The community flourished and expanded as the countryside came in. Flourished. Ramu no longer had to carry buckets when the pipeline was completed. The water is cool. Flowed if he was employed or not it continued to pour while he ate. It continued to pour as he slept. On weekends, it was a raging torrent. As he was playing the more the water flowed into the village, the more the money flowed into Ramu's pockets. Ramu the pipeline man became known as Ramu the miracle maker. It was merely the first stage of a big, big dream. You see, Ramu had plans that reached far beyond his village. Ramu planned to build pipelines all over the world. Ramu wants to meet his old friend. Ramu arranged a meeting with Samu. Somu, I've come here to ask you for your help. Somu straightened his stooped shoulders, and his dark eyes narrowed to a squint. Don't mock me, Samu hissed. I haven't come here to gloat, said Ramu. I've come here to offer you a great business opportunity. It took me more than two years before my first pipeline was complete. But I've learned a lot during those two years. I know what tools to use. Where to dig. How to lay the pipe. I kept notes as I went along, and I've developed a system that will allow me to build another pipeline and then another and another. I could build a pipeline a year by myself. But that would not be the best use of my time. What I plan to do is to teach you and others how to build a pipeline and then have you teach others and each of them teach others and oh there is a pipeline to every village in the region then a pipeline to every village in the country and eventually, a pipeline to every village in the world. Just think, Ramu continued, we could make a small percentage of every gallon of water that goes through those pipelines. The more water that flows through the pipelines, the more money that will flow into our pockets. The pipeline I built isn't the end of a dream. It's only the beginning. Ramu and Somu had long since retired. Their worldwide pipeline business was still pumping millions of dollars a year into their bank accounts. Ramu and Somu heard the same excuses over and over from LL over the world about pipeline. It made Ramu and Somu sad that so many people lacked vision. But both men resigned themselves to the fact that they lived in a bucket-carrying world and that only a small percentage of people dared to dream pipeline dreams. Part 1. We live in a bucket-carrying world. Lesson 1. Who are you a bucket carrier? Or a pipeline builder? Do you, like Samu the bucket carrier, get paid only after you complete the task? Or, like Ramu the pipeline builder, do you complete the task once and then be paid repeatedly? If you're like the majority of individuals, you're following the bucket carrying strategy. This is referred to as the time for money trap. The trouble with bucket carrying is that when you stop carrying buckets, you stop making money. That is to say the idea of a safe employment or ideal job is a mirage. The hazard of carrying buckets is inherent. Meaning the money is one time rather than continuing how much money would Somu spend if he awoke with a stiff back and couldn't get out of bed. A day to earn? Zero. Without employment, there is no money. Any bucket carrying duty is the same. When bucket carriers have used all their sick days and are ready to return to work, if they can't continue to carry buckets on their vacation days, they won't get paid. How long could you go without money if it stopped tomorrow? Do you have a mortgage? Make vehicle payments? Or pay for your child's education? Is it really six months? Is it really three months? One unit of time is exchanged for one unit of money. Where does it put you in a secure position? A steady stream of residual money in the pipeline income that continues to flow whether you put in the effort or not. The only way to achieve genuine security is to work together. Build a pipeline as Ramu did while you're still lugging buckets. Pipelines are lifelines because they provide access to water. Allow individuals to elude the time for money snare. When you create a pipeline, you only have to perform the job once, but you get compensated for it. Again and in time again pipelines are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. As a result, pipelines may be able to pay you while you sleep. Alternatively, you take part in the game. Alternatively, you may do it when you're retired. Alternatively, when you're I'm ill and incapacitated, and I'm unable to work. Or in the event of an emergency. 
That's how powerful residual revenue can be. That is why the author refers to your pipelines as lifelines. We live in a world where people carry buckets. The majority of people confuse buckets with buckets. Carrying for the construction of a pipeline we see that 99% of the folks have buckets in their hands. As a result, we automatically infer the only way to acquire what we desire in life is to carry a bucket. That's why Samu struggled to grasp the significance of pipelines, Ramu was the first to do so. Somu has never heard of a pipeline builder before. Pipelines were rejected by Somu because they were unique. To whoever it may concern, pipelines have yet to be demonstrated. To whoever it may concern, pipelines were both radical and dangerous. The great majority of individuals share Samu's viewpoint. We're surrounded with broken bucket carriers, so we assume that's how things are. There are several more bucket carriers in the area. There are more pipeline builders in the world than there are pipelines. Why? Because our parents followed the bucket carrying approach and trained us to do so as well. The bucket carrying model explains that in a bucket carrying world, there are certain things you must do in order to succeed ahead, to learn how to carry buckets, go to school, put forth your best effort, earn the privilege of carrying larger buckets, work for bucket business B after resigning from bucket firm A company B allows you to transport even larger buckets. Working longer hours will allow you to transport more buckets. Place the children in a bucket carrying college. Change your job from hauling metal to anything else. From hauling buckets to carrying plastic buckets to carrying digital buckets, we've got you covered. Imagine the day when you'll be able to leave your job. Lugging a bucket carry those buckets till then. What are the wages for all those bucket carriers? There isn't much. According to the annual What People Earn study conducted by Parade Magazine, the typical worker in the United States earns around $18,000 per year. Receives a yearly salary of $28,500. After subtracting almost 20% for taxes, you're left with $22,500 to live on. The take-home wage of $22,500 is insufficient. A sum of money sufficient to meet the basic necessities of a family of four as a result, the great majority of individuals are in this situation. I'm in severe need of cash. So, what do bucket carriers do if they run out of cash? Because they're holding a bucket they come up with a bucket carrying mindset. If you want to make more money, you'll need to carry more buckets. That's exactly what they do. What's the end result? North Americans now work the world's longest hours. Is it possible to make more money by carrying more items? Is the bucket strategy working? No. The facts are as follows, 1. Consumer debt is at an all-time high. In the previous 17 years, household debt in the United States has more than doubled. Today's typical household has for every dollar of discretionary income, there is 95 cents in debt. In the last 20 years, the number of women working to support their families has more than doubled. Since 1980, the percentage has risen from 19% to 46%. 3. A growing number of individuals are taking out second and third mortgages on their single most valuable asset. Houses in order to pay debts for. Personal bankruptcies have climbed year after year, reaching 1.4 million in 2000. Regardless of that the economy is improving. Bucket carriers believe that larger buckets equal more money. So bucket bearers justify their actions. That if they did, everything would be okay alternatively, you may obtain a job lugging larger buckets. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics maintains track of hourly salaries in the United States. Hundreds of various professions are available. A physician's bucket is around 10 times larger than a cook's bucket. However, this does not imply that the doctor is self-sufficient financially. He's equally reliant on his bucket. As a cook, I'm doing a good job. Why? The ordinary worker earns less than a professional. They do, however, spend more. The truth is, whether it's the physicians or the nurses, lawyers earning six figures a year spend the majority of their earnings to maintain their opulent lives. Doctors, attorneys, and accountants are envious of their ability to lift large buckets. The truth is that the, the doctor's bucket may be 10 times larger than the cook's. However, the physician spends 10 times as much, therefore they both end up in the same situation, living in the same house. Part 2. Your pipelines are vital to your survival. Pipeline builders, like Ramu, may not have much to show for their labor in the first few days or weeks. Even a decade however, regular and focused efforts over a long period of time are required. Small donations might grow into large profits over time. Regardless of the size of the buckets this is due to the fact that the bucket carrier has must haul the bucket back and forth to have it refilled when he ceases hauling, whether it's because of retirement, sickness, or injury, as a result of the burnout, the bucket begins to dry out. 
pipelines, on the other hand, keep spewing earnings long after the end of the business day. The buckets had gone dry. The same rule applies to huge bucket carriers as it does to tiny bucket carriers. It's not about the size of the bucket. Huge buckets seem to attract big people. Spenders. Adopting a pipeline building mindset and then putting your money into it is the path to financial independence. Putting the pipeline concept into action even if you make a lot of money, you may not be financially independent. Only pipes are capable of doing so. If you're interested in learning more about if you don't use a pipeline technique, your bucket will overflow. It will ultimately dry up. Lesson 4. The power behind the pipeline, leverage. Leverage is a fantastic notion that has the potential to change the world. Johannes Gutenberg, a young German entrepreneur, converted a wine press into the world's first commercial printing press in 1440. He printed 180 Gutenberg Bibles and sold them all in a matter of days. Gutenberg's printing press was a huge hit right away. Printing presses sprang up in a matter of decades. Throughout Europe. By the mid-16th century, there were 8 million printed books in circulation in Europe, which was 10 times the number of books that were available in the United States. Had been created in the previous year thousands of years are added together. There is a one-to-one correspondence between efforts and outcomes. One hour of effort yields one hour of output. It would have taken one scribe one day to hand copy one page, and then 100 days to turn out 100 pages. Modeled by hand. Let's pretend it took a printer from the 16th century. One day to set the type for one page, with the goal of producing just one at the end of the day printers a copy of the proof press for printing. When the printer arrived, he pressed 100 copies. To put it another way, a printer could generate in two days what it took two weeks to produce would have taken 100 days for the scribe to make something leverage as a powerful tool. The effort to result ratio in the pipeline building approach is no longer one to one. When we make use of the work is the same, but the outcome might be 100 times or 1000 times larger with leverage. Leverage comes in two forms, time and money. The term leverage lever is derived from an ancient French phrase that means to lighten. An accurate assessment of leverage is strength. When we apply the leverage principle to time and money, the same thing happens, the outcomes are the same. Compounded. When it comes to leveraging money, each dollar invested might increase to many thousands of dollars over time. 10 times your original investment the printing press exemplifies how individuals may make the most of their time, money, and efforts. Leverage shatters the one unit time for one unit of money equation people can operate more efficiently when they have leverage. It's the power behind every pipeline to work smarter, not harder. Hiring staff is a typical illustration of how individuals may make the most of their time. Let's take an example. You want to start a restaurant. It would be ideal. It's difficult for you to play host, waiter, or any other role. You can be a cook, a dishwasher, and a bookkeeper while yet running a successful company. You can only be in one location at a time. You fire employees to execute certain duties one at a time. And you should do what pipeline builders like Ramu and Warren Buffett have done. Lesson 5. The Palm Beach Pipeline is a money-leveraged project. The emperor decided to honor the game's inventor with a prize. He called the inventor to the royal palace and asked him to explain himself. The inventor will be given one desire, it was stated to the court. The inventor sheepishly whispered, I am honored, your highness. Please give me one grain, says the narrator. A bowl of rice. The monarch was taken aback and said, just one grain of rice? Well, only one grain for the initial chessboard square, the inventor said. Then multiply by two. Grains for the second square, four grains for the third square, and so on the third square, and so on until the single grain for the whole chessboard has been doubled. That is my opinion. Just a simple desire. The emperor was overjoyed. I was given such a fantastic game for such a low price, he says. He pondered this. My forefathers and mothers have smiled. Today is all about me. It's finished, said the emperor. Bring out the chess board and let everyone see what we've accomplished. The chess board drew the court's attention. A one pound bag of rice was made by a kitchen staff. The inventor then started scattering rice grains around the table. When he doubled the quantity of grains on the board when as the first row of 8 squares was filled 1, 2, 4, 16, the bystanders laughed and prodded one other. Rice grain number 32,641,128. By the middle of the second row, though, the chuckles had given way to gasps. Tiny heaps of rice quickly multiplied into small bags, which multiplied into medium bags, which multiplied into large 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 bags, 
which increased by a factor of two to large bags of rice the emperor realized he'd made a terrible error by the end of the second row. The grains that were owed to the there were 48 squares left after inventor totaled 32,768. The monarch ordered a halt to the game and summoned the country's best mathematicians. They flung their abacus beads and scribbled hastily on slate boards. After a lot of wrangling, the mathematicians came to the same conclusion, for every square on the 64-square grid, a grain of rice is doubled. A square chess board would equal 18 million trillion grains of rice, which is the same as the total amount of rice in the world. The rule of 72 is a simple method for determining how long an investment will pay off. As an example, let's consider the case of Raju. He invested 1 lakh rupees in the stock market and earned a 10% yearly return. Step by step, please. Step 1, wrote down the amount of money you want to invest. A 1 lakh rupees. Step 2, 10% yearly return rate was written down. Step 3, 72 divided by 10 is 7.2 years, which is how long it takes to double your money. After 7.2 years, 1 lakh rupees becomes 2 lakhs, 4 lakhs rupees in 14.4 years, and 8 lakhs rupees in 21.6 years. The larger the amount over and over again. We've all been granted the same amount of time, which is the beauty of time leverage. That implies it's now or never. Leveling the playing field between the wealthy and the rest of the population those with an average income. Every day, everyone is allotted the same amount of time. That is why authors should take use of the people's pipeline. There is an equal amount of time available to everyone. Everyone, whether they are wealthy or impoverished, male or female, black or white, college educated or not whether you're young or elderly, you can't avoid dropping out. Because we all have the same amount of time, the difference between those who live paycheck to paycheck and those who don't is negligible. Persons who do not have to work for a living and those who do not have to work for a living how they use their 1,440 minute daily allowance consider what we might do if we work together. If we put in a few of hours each evening, we could make a big difference in our lives. And to accomplish something meaningful on weekends, such as constructing a pipeline. If you set aside two hours, you will be able to accomplish your goal. For example, you may add 16 hours to each workday, say one in the morning before work and one in the evening, plus three additional hours on Saturday and Sunday. Add hours of productive time to your weekly routine. 16 hours per week multiplied by 50 weeks per year is 800 more hours per year, or 100 additional hours per year. 8-hour workdays are 3 months and 10 days of additional 8-hour workdays every year and all you had to do was to acquire 3 additional months of productive time each year. I set aside a couple of hours each day. One of the reasons why successful individuals have more, accomplish more, and obtain more is because they use their leisure time effectively. According to a recent story in the Wall Street Journal, the top 10% of earners in North America work an average of 40 hours each week. The top 10% of earners work an average of 52 hours per week, while the poorest 10% work just 45 hours per week. Not only do the top 10% of earners work longer hours, but they also work smarter. To put it another way, they don't exchange time. For the ake of money people who are successful in every field they respect their time and take advantage of any chance to do so. The point is that there are many bucket carriers out there who are doing just well. But they are unable to do so. Stay in free fall indefinitely. There is no safety net in people's lives as long as they sell time for money. Why? Because if they are unable to work due to sickness, accident, or layoffs, their salary will be reduced. Without a wage, bucket bearers have no security. The optimum moment to feather your nest is when business is thriving, as smart people recognize. Smart before a recession, individuals build safety nets. Begins, not in the middle that's why I encourage individuals that now, not later, is the greatest time to start building their pipelines. The economy is in free fall. It reminds me of the ant and the grasshopper myth. The ant worked as a pipeline constructor. He spent some of his summer days storing grain in preparation for the impending harvest. Winder. He, too, had a good time throughout the summer. However, he had the foresight to spend part of his time constructing his own house. Pipeline. On the other hand, the grasshopper was a bucket bearer. As soon as he got his hands on his money, he squandered it all. He received it and spent the rest of his time outside in the sun. He was unconcerned about the impending winter. When it comes to the when the chilly winter arrived, he didn't have a pipeline in place. And he died of starvation. Keep in mind that time equalizes the playing field. We don't all have the same amount of money to work with. However, we all have the same amount of time. You can construct a pipeline that will continue to pay for itself by using some of your spare time properly. Years. 
We're fortunate to live in an era where practically everything is possible. Anyone can construct pipelines by leveraging their time. It hasn't always been this this. Only the extremely wealthy could leverage their time at the start of the 20th century. The year was 1890, and the great majority of individuals worked 10 hours a day as a minimum wage worker. Laborers. They were too preoccupied with staying alive to consider leverage. However, today society has more free time than ever before. And the great equalizer is time. Time gives the small person a chance to compete. Among the huge lads rich individuals do not have 48 hours each day, but impoverished people do. They each receive the same amount of money. The number of times 7 days a week, 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Pipelines are no longer only for the wealthy. Anyone with a little time and a lot of determination may take advantage of this opportunity. In 2-5 to five years, they will establish a people's pipeline that will run for years, if not decades. In truth, we have at our disposal the world's greatest time leveraging instrument. This time leveraging technique has produced more millionaires in a shorter period of time than any other single innovation in history. This incredible technology is known as the e-pipeline, and it is the ultimate time leverage tool, the internet. Part 3. The End All Pipeline. This is the seventh lesson. The ultimate pipeline of e-compounding the internet age is transforming the globe, that's for sure. The CEO of General Electric, Jack Welch, told the Wall Street Journal according to, the internet is the greatest invention ever. Welch has seen a lot of changes in the economic world over his lifetime. In 1936, she was born. Andy Grove, Intel's chairman, was much more outspoken. In five years, they'll either be an internet firm or they'll be a traditional business. It won't be a business at all. What is it about the internet pipeline that makes it so powerful? Each year, millions of individuals all across the world are involved. Link to the internet through a PC or a mobile phone instantaneously communicate or sell to one another 24-7-365. The internet is as quick as light, but it costs a lot of money. It costs a few bucks every day to use it, and it's constantly on. There are no limits on the number of applications and connections that may be made. A total of 100 million individuals were connected to the internet. In less than half the time it took to construct the web the Brooklyn Bridge is a famous landmark in New York City. Although the internet has been revolutionary, it is far from flawless. The internet's greatest strength is also its greatest weakness. Weakness it is very large. It's much too packed. It's too perplexing. It's much too competitive. Websites that sell products online are known as e-commerce sites. Three big obstacles to overcome. One, they need more traffic. Two, they need an increase in sales. Three, they need a higher level of repeat.